Welcome back to New Day Northwest. We all know in this crazy journey called life, things don't always go according to plan. But how we react to those speed bumps can make a real difference in all areas of our lives as parents, people, and professionals. Here with more on the key to a resilient mindset is Dr. Greg Jantz. I'm so excited Isn't to have you here. Isn't just a fun word, resilience? It is a word that is buoyant. It's my word for 2023. Here, I love it. All right, yeah. I'm going to put in a bumper sticker and put it <laughs> on my car, too. So what is resiliency? How do you describe it? Okay, well, you know when you need it, because if something happens and mm -hmm. you go, I'm just not myself anymore. I can't seem to get myself back to where I was. Yes. So it's a sense that we want to feel normal again, but we can't. And yes. sometimes things hold us back. Something traumatic happened. Maybe the last two or three years seemed traumatic, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and we don't. We feel less resilient. Okay. We feel like I can't get my bounce back. I completely identify with that. I'm sure so many people out yeah. there can because if it, if it starts at home, it starts within, and then it starts to bleed into other corners of our life, like work. Exactly. And in the professional life, you can't quite get to where you need to be. So what happens when we don't? develop resiliency, what does that look like? Okay, three things we have to be aware of. If I lose my resiliency, my ability to bounce back mm -hmm. after maybe something traumatic, then I may be more prone to depression mm -hmm. and just the heaviness, I can't get off me. I'll feel a lot more fatigue. Yeah. My immune system may be down because everything feels oppressive. Mm. Everything feels heavy. Um, I may suffer from anxiety. If I'm not resilient, I may really have a lot of just fear and anxiousness. Wow, okay. okay, so this is like the soma and the psyche. And then the next thing that could happen could be addiction. It's like, I don't like feeling depressed, I don't like being anxious, <laughs> and then I just gonna, I, maybe I'm gonna turn to alcohol, maybe I'm gonna misuse a prescription drug, yeah. maybe I'm gonna overeat, but I turn to kind of self-destructive behaviors if I don't get my resiliency back. And so what lowers the resilience? Like, what are the things in sure. our lives? Because we, we all deal with everything oh, yes. every day, so what are the things that when we see them coming, we're like, here that goes. Yeah, and we can be proactive. Yeah. Okay, so if I have a lot of leftover anger, okay. resentments, okay. unforgiveness, maybe something traumatic happened, okay. and I'm really having trouble forgiving somebody, right? And Or I have to see them every day, yeah. and they're troublesome. Yeah. So anything in the anger department can lower my resilience. Because I just don't, I don't feel joy, I don't feel peace, I feel angry, you know, I feel resentful. That's an important thing, people say, you know, let go of the anger, but that's yeah. true. I, I, I have a hard time letting go of anger, and you're right, it just we just gotta the angry person. We just gotta clean ourselves up clean a bit. <laughs> I yeah, love that's that. one. Okay. Yeah. So uh, what do we need to do to start to build back that resilience as, as adults, and especially like, how do we teach our kids that as well? Okay, let's talk about that, all that's right. so good. So to be resilient and to get it back, I need to first of all go, okay, do I have any toxic emotions? Am I full of anger, am I full of resentment? Am I full of fear? Do I have so much huh. anxiety in my life? There's something right now that's happening for people called anticipatory anxiety. Uh -huh. I'm anticipating the next bad thing. Yeah. Because it's there every day, right, if we right. look for it. So too much anxiety. Um, I may have some health issues that I can't seem to pull back out of. Mm -hmm. So I need to look at my physical health okay. as well. I need to have a plan for my self-care. One of the things that's happened is we have more sleep disorders than ever before. P insomnia. Uh, is huge. So if I don't get enough sleep, it affects a lot of things. I used to work in sleep research, so uh -huh. uh, sleep and our emotions. So we've got to look at, go back to the basic self-care. Yeah. People even forget to drink water. It's like, oh yeah, I've done 12 cups of coffee today, but I forgot <laughs> to drink any water. So simple things yeah. that have a profound effect. Well, sometimes they feel like you're, I mean, they're you know, drinking water, hydrated, caffeinated, or, or have been drinking alcohol. And I really think that I think a lot of people are feeling yeah. like that. And I'm sure if you're out there and yeah. you're listening to Dr. Jantz say, if you're feeling this, and I'm like, are you, you're talking about me? It's something for all of us to be it aware of. It is, well, and it, it's true. I think we're all there. Yeah. And so... Once we start to kind of identify those markers, how do we go forward? How sometimes, do we sometimes we need action? accountability. Okay. Okay. Because I can say, well, I'm going to change these things. Maybe I need help with forgiveness. Maybe I am so resentful mm -hmm. that I need. Maybe I need a counselor or therapist, somebody to help yeah. me through some of this. So what do I need to do? So do a checkup from the neck up kind of, okay? <laughs> yeah, go, okay, what do I really need yeah. to do? Where do I need help? Where do I need accountability? And also, this is the year that 
we're not going to necessarily do goals in the same way. This year, because we're going to be more resilient, yeah. we're going to only make commitments, things I'm really willing to commit to. Okay. Am I really willing to commit to cleaning up my emotions? Am I really willing to, to deal with these things I need to? Yeah. Look, if I did that now, how, how will I be in the next three months? I'll be a lot better. You know, and that's that key word, commitment. It is that's commitment. Key. I, I, I yeah. have a fear of commitment. I'm so. not going to lie, <laughs> but that's important. Things, yeah, because if I don't do it, then I, maybe I feel like I've failed. Right. Yeah. But let's talk about kids. Yeah. I love kids. Yeah. Um, and the challenges with kids. Here's the good news about kids and resiliency. They're naturally resilient. Yeah. Kids have a bounce back factor that we can learn from. <laughs> it's like kids, like... They forget, and the next day, like, everything's okay. Yeah. We need to remember that kids are naturally resilient, and I'm thinking about emotions. Right. So, but they also absorb the emotion of their environment. Yeah. So if I have a fear-based environment, a lot of fear, the kids are like a sponge. They're going to absorb that over time. So it's... So look at what what is in the environment. How you're modeling it. Yes. Thank you so much. I can't wait to check out your book, The Power of Connection, Maximize Your Health and Happiness with Relationships. It's so important. I appreciate you, Dr. Oh, yeah. Jans. Thank you. Good to be you. here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, coming up.